Mr. Steve Kelly describes himself as the most Australian-sounding American you'll ever meet. He also says that an accent is a telling trademark, especially for a leader. Take a look. Most people want to be a leader. God has made you to influence others for his kingdom. The fulfillment of your destiny is tied to your ability to help others achieve their dreams. The accent of leadership by Steve Kelly reveals foundational principles to help you become a better leader. Please welcome back to the 700 Club, the pastor of Wave Church right here in Virginia Beach, Steve Kelly. Steve, it's nice to have you with us Thank today. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. So explain that accent. You sound like an Aussie, but you're an American. How'd yeah. that happen? Well, I, like I say, I'm the most Australian sounding American you'll ever meet. <laughs> I was born in Queens, New York, lived here until I was eight years old, and then my mother and father decided to move with five children to Australia. Wow. So I have an American passport with an Australian accent. <laughs> How did you realize that your accent could be an asset? Because it is, you know, you're, you're very noticed when you speak with an accent in this You know, country. it's funny. Some of my friends back in Australia, when they told them I'm going back to America, said to me, well, you got an Australian accent. You know, will Americans like that? Will they accept you? <laughs> And I found it to be my greatest advantage. Everywhere I went, people said, where are you from? Yeah. No other pastor gets asked that question because they sound like everybody else. Yeah. Because I have an accent, they at least, then they say, well, what are you doing here? And I get to tell them. And they listen hard to your message, right? Yeah. Well, at least <laughs> they get some listening for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> How do you make the connection between uh, an accent in your voice and an accent in leadership? And what's the value of that? I, I think, you know, the Bible talks about the time the Roman soldier was sent to arrest Jesus. And he was sent there to arrest God. And then when he heard Jesus speak, he was so taken by the words of Jesus that he literally forgot what he was there to do. And when he goes back, they said, where is he? He says, where's who? They said, well, Jesus, you're supposed to arrest him. And he says, oh, he goes, never a man spoke like that man. Mm -hmm. So I believe words can be arresting. I believe that he was sent to arrest Jesus, but instead he was arrested by Jesus' words. So is everyone called to be a leader? Your book is called The Accent of Leadership. Where yeah. does that fall in each of our lives? I think so. I think from the living room to the boardroom and everything in between, we're all called to be leaders by our example of our life, of being mm -hmm. a Christian, to Truly lead in others, our families. leading yeah. our families, whatever we do in the workplace, to lead by with our testimony, to lead people to Christ, and to leave a legacy, a godly example. You talk about this in the book, but share with us some of the key hallmarks of leadership, what, how you would define quality leadership. I think uh, one of the, my favorite scriptures there is it talks about where there is no vision, people cast off restraint. Yeah. And so as true as that is in the negative, it's also true on the positive. When you do have a vision, you wear restraints. And mm -hmm. will you, the clearer the vision, the greater the restraints to you to achieve what you believe God's called you to achieve. Yeah. So what if someone is listening or watching us right now and hearing this message and saying, well, I, how do I become a leader? How do I take these qualities that you write about in the book and make them my own? Uh, you know, I, I honestly believe it's finding out what is your God-ordained environment. You know, a flower will thrive as long as it stays in its God-ordained mm -hmm. environment. That is the soil. A bird, its God-ordained environment is the air, it's the sky. Yeah. You know, a fish, its God-ordained environment is water. And I think for a Christian who wants to aspire to leadership, I think getting yourself planted in a good local church, understanding the principle of honour and leadership and being in a place that is visionary. Maybe you don't really know what God's vision for your life is, but if you're in a visionary environment and serve that vision, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Yeah, being in that environment makes you hungry to want to find out yes. what your your role as a leader is. You talk also about the importance of honoring leaders, yes. and that's very biblical. Yeah. Share about that. You know, my daughter, uh, I've dated her since she was four years old up until she got married every month. Wow. And I wanted her to know Go what dad. it was. Yes. <laughs> and, and I said, you know, she, she understood. She goes, Dad, I know why you do this. She goes, you want me to know what it is to be treated like a gentleman. Anybody who doesn't treat me as good as you do, I'm not going to get involved with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, your destiny gets connected to who you join yourself to. Yeah, and so you got to make sure you get the right people in your life and the wrong people out of your life. So honor is something that is true in government. It's true in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, I said to my daughter, watch for someone's attitude toward police and toward authority. Yeah. Watch how they treat their parents and just don't it's get it's all tied together isn't it it all works together absolutely yeah. it's yeah. an attitude of the heart leadership you say is linked to destiny and yes. we all want to know what our destiny is absolutely yeah you know I, I believe that you know people sometimes got such ambition to, to you know independently try to fill 
their vision, that they don't see themselves being um, serving another leader and then they try and go out and do it themselves. But I do believe that, that how far we want to go in God and in leadership is greatly determined by the amount of leadership we're under. That's the centurion. He goes, I'm a man in authority, I'm a man under authority. And I Humility believe... Humility is a strong quality to, absolutely. for a person to possess. Well, we have just touched the tip of the iceberg. There are many, many more tips on leadership in Steve Kelly's book. It's called The Accent of Leadership. If you'd like to find out how to get a copy, log on to CBN.com. Great to Thank have you, you back, Thank you so much. Steve. Good to Thank see you. you.